Hello friends, this video on is matter around us part 4 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Okay, so with this let's start understanding these three different type of uh, mixtures in detail. The first is solution. As I told, solution is a homogeneous mixture. I have told that. It's a homogeneous mixture. And this mixture can have two or more than two substance and they so many examples this can be a lemonade this is a lemonade it suppose or this can be a uh, water plus uh, sodium chloride common salt salt water okay or it can be alloy this is alloy bronze brass right air air is also a good example of mixture why because air if you take air composition from here and here you'll see the same composition yeah so if you take sample from these two places almost you'll find the same composition of uh, air yeah but if you take from two different cities if you take a composition of air from let's suppose delhi and one from mumbai or two different part of the world one from uh, London and one from uh, New York you'll find different composition of air because they'll have different pollution level from but from a um, same room actually if you take two different uh, samples you'll find same composition so please note here uh, solution as the name uh, looks like looks like it is a liquid but it need not be liquid so in this case if you see these two are liquid this is solid this is gas right so you can have a solution in solid liquid and gas form okay it need not be liquid so in solution the particle size is very small the particle size is very very small and when you say small uh, it is in the range of uh, diameter of 1 nanometer that is the range in fact, it is less than the diameter is less than uh, one nanometer. Okay, so when you talk about solution, if you see here, the particle size is very very small, very very small, and they are so small that they are evenly distributed. Okay. Now, when you talk about solution, you talk about two components of solution. One is solute, and the other is solvent. When you talk about solution, you talk about two component. Okay, so let let's study this uh, solute and solvent now. Okay, as I told, solution has two part: solute and solvent. Okay, so what is solute and what is solvent? See, if we talk about solvent, that is nothing but the component of solution that dissolves other component. Let me write here. This is the component. Of my solution that dissolves other component. It is generally the one which is larger. For example, you take a, a two spoon of salt and mix with one glass water right so with this if you do a uh, mix these two what you get is a solution we have seen that so in this case the sol solvent is the water because water is the one which is in bigger quantity typically it is the one which is in bigger quantity and this is water is the one which is dissolving salt okay if you talk about the solute now talk about the solute solute is nothing but is the component again there are two components as I told of the solution the solute is the component of solution that is dissolved in solvent and typically this is the one which is in lesser quantity lesser quantity 
and this is the one which is in greater quantity. This is generally not always 99% case. Okay, so a solution will have solute and solvent. Okay, so let's see this. So if you have a solute and solvent, when you mix, you get solution. Solute is typically in lesser quantity, solvent is in more quantity. Solvent is the one that dissolves other component. Solute is the one that is dissolved. So solute is dissolved in solvent to form solution. I can write this line. Solute gets dissolved in solvent to form solution. Okay, for example, you have some salt and some water, when you mix, you get a solution. So, in this case, this is solvent because water dissolves salt. Since salt is getting dissolved, it is solute. And since water is dissolving salt, water is solvent. Okay, so these are the examples of solute and solvent. Now, we can actually classify solutions based on the type of solvent. As I told, solution has solvent and solute, right? So let's see different kind of solutions. So we can have gaseous solution where the solvent is gas. We have liquid solution, we can have solid solution. So example, we see gaseous solution, most of this is gas. Liquid solution, most of this is liquid. Solid solution, again, alloy. Brass, German, silver, bronze, these kind of alloys. Let's see this in details. So when you talk about the gaseous solution where my solvent is gas, again, solute can be any of these, solid, liquid, gas. This can either be further classified into three parts, right? Three possible scenarios. One case, the solute is solid. Other case, solute is liquid. Other case, solute is gas. But in all these case, my solvent is gas. Okay, I'm changing solute to solid, liquid and gas. Example, I'll show you. For example, the first example of solute is solid. So in this case, if you see, these particles are solid, but the whole thing is gas. Example is camphor and nitrogen gas. When you try to form a solution, it forms a homogeneous solution actually. This will get mixed. Next is solute is liquid. So if we try to mix chloroform and nitrogen gas, that also forms a solution. Here also we see this is liquid, chloroform, and nitrogen gas is a gas. If we try to mix two gas, so I'm trying to mix, let's suppose, oxygen, nitrogen. For example, common air. Air has oxygen, nitrogen, carbon dioxide. So all these forms to form a solution. And in this case, uh, the solute and solvent both are gas. Okay, so three examples of gaseous solution. Similarly, we'll have three examples of liquid solution where solvent is liquid. Here also we'll change the solvent to uh, solute, solid, solvent to liquid, sorry, and solute to gas. So um, we are changing here solute, right? Solute to solid, liquid to gas, but in all these three cases, the solvent is liquid. The first scenario, my solute is liquid, but my Solvent, sorry, sol solute is solid, but solvent is liquid. This is a very common scenario you've seen. Sugar and water. Here, liquid in liquid. Example, ink in water or ethanol in water. You can say ink in water or ethanol in water. C2H5OH is ethanol in water. Or let me write ethanol in water. Ethanol in and the example is gas in liquid. For example, this one oxygen is dissolved in water. If you take talk about oxygen, uh, if you take any water actually, it has oxygen dissolved in it. That is again a case of a solution. Okay? Where oxygen is gas and gas is a solute here that is dissolved in water and water is a solvent here. Or you can talk about the uh, the cold drink which you have soda and cold drink you take. There you have uh, carbon dioxide actually it dissolved. In the water that's why when you open the bottle you uh, see the bubbles so that is dissolved and high pressure so we'll talk about that in the later classes when we uh, see 
the same chapter, we will study the same chapter in more details. What are the factors that, are, that uh, impact the solubility of uh, the solution? Here we'll just touch upon this. Okay, same thing. Uh, we have a solid solution here. My solvent is solid. Here we can also further classify into three parts based on the solute. Here the solute is solid. Here the solute is liquid, and here the solute is gas. Okay, so in this case. Solute is solid, for example, copper dissolved in gold. So, when you say 22 carat gold, actually the 2 carat is remaining typically copper, right? Or let's suppose 18 carat gold. So, in this case, if you see my maximum percentage is gold and some amount is copper, right? So, since copper is maximum here and copper dissolves gold, so copper is a solute and gold is a solvent. Or you can have a case where a liquid is dissolved in uh, solid. A, a good example is amalgam of mercury and sodium. So you, you dissolve a small amount of mercury in sodium. Mercury is a liquid, we, are, we know that. That's the only, in fact, number metal, yeah. Or metal which is, mercury is the only metal which is liquid actually at STP. Sodium is a solid. And we talk about the gas in solid. A good example is you uh, take the mixture of hydrogen and palladium. Palladium actually absorbs hydrogen. It acts as the storage of hydrogen. And then if it is a palladium which has which is full of hydrogen, we say it is a solution of hydrogen and palladium. Where palladium is again uh, the solvent because palladium is actually absorbing hydrogen and hydrogen is a solid. Okay. So we now know what is solution, right? And we have seen nine different examples of uh, solution based on the solute and solvent, right? Where we have changed the solute from solid liquid and solid to liquid to gas. And again, solvent also is solid to liquid to gas. Three into three is nine uh, possible choices. And we have studied these uh, different types of solutions. Let's see the properties of these solution. See, first is a solution is typically a homogeneous mixture. That is something which we have told also. Uh, let me repeat this. It is homogeneous mixture. The second thing is the particle size. I have already discussed this. I am just reiterating, reiterating this. The particle size is less. It is even less than one nanometer. One nanometer is nothing but 10 to the power minus 9 meter. See, so small. Talking about diameter, so you cannot see the particles from the naked eyes. Okay, and since the particle size is very small, they do not scatter beam of light, so it won't show any Tyndall effect, right? So I'll just try it first. Do not scatter beam of light. We have seen this uh, in the activity when you prepare uh, salt and water solution, and then you try to put a beam of light, it will not scatter. The path is not visible because it's very small actually. The size is very small. So the light actually passes through the solution. It doesn't get scattered. Okay. And these particles actually cannot be separated by filtration. We have seen this as well. Right. So you cannot separate by filtration. Filtration, you cannot separate. Okay. Also, this if you have a salt and water solution, it won't settle down. Even if you keep it for five, six hours the salt particles won't settle down, right? That means this particular uh, solution is stable. So st st these are stable, right? Even if you keep a solution, the solution is let's suppose salt, common salt and water solution, it is stable. Even if you keep for 10 hours, 20 hours, the salt won't come out or salt won't get deposited in the lower layer. It won't settle down, okay? So it is stable. These are the properties of solution. Okay. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch more videos. Attempt free online tests, get pre-study materials, find tutors and mentors, and much more. Thanks once again.